Hospital Pondicherry, a very high volume cataract surgeon. He will talk to us on uh, uh, large eyes and small eyes. Thank you, uh, you know. After an excellent uh, talk by Professor from Bangladesh about uh, the many no's uh, which we should follow for posterior polar, I mean, it's so important that we have to think uh, in some of these conditions, no, where the eye is big and small. Many of the time, no, they are uh, difficult like this, no, or very attractive like this sometimes, either if they are big or small. So especially when they are small, they have a lot of crowding of the anterior segment, mainly cataracts which are intumescent, no, which are with a lot of uh, uh, intralenticular and also vitreous pressure, patients with phacomorphic uh, eyes which are uh, smaller with, uh, with colobomas, and also eyes with significant narrow angles, either with or without sinica, especially angle closure glaucomas, you need to be very careful. Plateau iris, and also another condition which you have to keep in mind is nanophthalmos. Any axial length below 20.5, you have to think in a different way. Very important is uh, your assessment before surgery. Carefully assess the anterior segment for uh, any iridotomy. Many of the times the iridotomy would have done outside, patient may not realize, so you have to check carefully for uh, retro reflex and zonular integrity because many cases have weak zonules and also cuneoscopy is very important to rule out angle closures. Biometry, I don't have to insist, either it is long or small eyes, we need to use the best formulas to get the best axial length and also the IOL power calculation and uh, preferably you can use an IOL master or immersion biometry to get an accurate reading in some of these eyes below 22 and above 24. Uh, if available, AS, OCT, UBM, and also specular microscopy can be done. So when you're dealing with these eyes, I'm sure most of you have all this in your OR, but make sure again you have inside your OR so that it can be opened up immediately for use, like blue to hooks to ring and uh, uh, segments, uh, best viscoelastic, whatever you have, and also your backup vitrectomy. So to deepen the chamber in a shallow AC, uh, it's good to have uh, a nice decompression before surgery in the form of intravenous mannitol, wherever the patients are comfortable, safe for mannitol or old glycerol, you do that, you know, because that is very important than to have intravitreal pressure or the uh, intralenticular pressure inside your operating room and then use a high molecular weight viscoelastic to deepen the chamber and never over inflate. That's a mistake which a lot of young surgeons uh, do. If you over inflate, again you can raise the pressure and you can force a lot of your uh, anterior segment tissues like iris into the incision. So see us, these are some of the tips which are uh, some uh, very important to keep in mind like how you see uh, the iridotomy there. So it's a patient with uh, a chronic kind of angle closure glaucoma uh, where uh, uh, many of the times now, you know, and if there is not much of optic nerve at compromise, we still do a cataract surgery. Clear lens extraction is still uh, a practice now in some parts of the world, but still not a uh, basic practice in this part of the country, but uh, you can consider. But making incision of the right size is very important to reduce any wound leak, you know, whenever you have cases like this. And it's good to raise the uh, bottle height, you know, so that uh, you have a, a good fluidics inside the eye, and you also decrease the outflow by lowering your flow rate, and use modes. If you're doing a, a, a traditional FACO, you use pulse, uh, pulse or burst mode, which can uh, minimize the ultrasound energy, because many of these ca cases can have uh, difficult and harder cataracts also, where you don't want to put a lot of energy onto your endothelium and damage the endothelial cells. And uh, probably, our Possibly wherever, no, it's, it's, it's good to do uh, capsular back FACO, do it inside and uh, keep all your parameters also slightly lower than normally what you do for your routine cases. So it's very important to keep forming the chamber because again the chamber can shallow whenever you are doing uh, certain manipulations. So it's good to uh, keep forming the chamber in between your procedures so that you protect your endothelium and also have some amount of space in the anterior chamber to comfortably manure your parameters. I'm not going into detail of this case. It's, it's a routine uh, fake emulsification, but if you keep all these tips in mind, I'm sure you can do a comfortable FACO in patients with narrow angles. <coughs> so nanophthalmas, it's a very good work done by my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Sharmila, 
where she randomized the nanophthalmic eyes with and without sclerostomy, and they found that sclerostomy with FACO significantly reduces the complications because these eyes are not like normal eyes. So never, never take it for granted. If you have axial length below 21, be careful, but anything below 20, I think it's ideal to do a sclerostomy. Now you can do, or you can ask your uh, VR colleagues if available, four into four superficial flap, and then you dissect a deep uh, uh, scleral block, and you cauterize the edges of the, of the block which you have dissected, and also you allow a slow drainage of fluid, and then you take them up for cataract surgery, because many of these nanophthalmic eyes, because they delay the surgery, because they have some useful wash, you, should, you don't want to touch them, you delay, they may have uh, significant cataracts or dense cataracts as you see in this patient. So it's good to do the sclerostomy before you take them up. Once you do the sclerostomy, I think it becomes uh, much easier. The risk again is when there is a difference in the pressure, when there is a sudden reduction of pressure, choroidal expansion, and then your uh, uh, supracoroidal hemorrhage and all that is uh, uh, not uncommon in some of these patients. You can go through and you can say that, you know, you were comfortable in doing, but uh, it may not be uh, the same day always. So you have to keep in mind uh, some of these eyes where you have to do a prophylactic sclerostomy. Dealing with vitreous is again a, a dilemma when we have uh, uh, flat chambers, especially in phacomorphic glaucomas. Uh, uh, in, in our practice, we normally, in uh, really phacomorphic with shallow chambers with dense cataracts, we prefer to do small incision over phaco. There are several ways to deal with the vitreous. You can blindly do a vitreous tap. Uh, some people uh, really are not very comfortable in doing that. So there you can do automated vitrectomy with a uh, little bit of infusion or even without infusion. You can leave the passively the vitreous to come out also on the syringe, which happens. And there are several uh, reports where people have done that comfortably to reduce the intravitreal pressure. And once you decompress the vitreous, then your chamber starts uh, forming better. You can stain better. You can have viscoelastic inside the chamber to do your technique, whether it's phaco or small incision. So dealing with vitreous is again important when you have a flat chambers in uh, uh, phacomorphic glaucomas and cases where you don't have space in the anterior chamber. So the, the other side, the flip side is when you have uh, high myopes or the big eyes, you have deep anterior chamber. So this deep anterior chamber, you know, it, it allows more space for you, but the problem is it is so deep that you can't visualize properly. So there is a, a pupillary block. So you have to reverse that pupillary block by doing a very simple tip. I'm sure uh, uh, many of you are practicing it. You just have to uh, raise with another instrument, the iris, and then you take off that pupillary block, and then you equalize the uh, anterior and posterior chamber, which makes you to do the FACO comfortably. This is one small tip. I'll just show you what happens when, uh, uh, quickly in this video, when, when you raise your bottle height or reduce your bottle height. Now, when you want to raise your bottle height, you invariably increase the pressure in the eye. See somebody with 30 millimeters mercury and see what happens when the pressure goes up to uh, 60, uh, 45 to 60. You see the amount of uh, perfusion which is affected on the optic nerve. You can see the uh, constriction of the vessels and then uh, it would return back to normal when you're reducing. So, so there is a role where you, know, you can have uh, something which controls uh, the pressure inside the eye in the form of active fluidics. I don't have any financial interest. We have been using this and we are very comfortable. It increases the stability. It reduces the post-occlusion surge. There is reduced stress to the ocular tissues when you're doing in small and big eyes. And also there is uh, uh, reduced risk of uh, complications. Uh, uh, so it is possible to lower the pressure and do, I'm not going to again go in detail, you can flow as low as 25 intraocular pressure and people do it comfortably. And now this procedure is getting popular in the form of uh, lip MICS or low infusion pressure MICS.